Buenos días. Gracias por venir. Good morning. Thank you for being here so early. I'm Alejandro Simas. I work for Genexus for quite some time already. I did my job at the support level, and now I'm part of the business team in Genexus. Uh, she is Lucia Guedes, one of our designers. And we are here today to share with you um, information about what we do when we create applications for smart devices. Let me talk about Lucia first, may I? Lucia started working uh, early this year and when Lucia arrived at the office we were developing a challenge internally. It was um, a kind of contest where Genexus developers, those who create, who are creating the generator for smart devices, had to create and develop an application with Genexus and then upload it. One, to one of the stores. So Lucia arrived at the time when the applications were complete and ready according to developers. They were ready to be uploaded to the stores. So when Lucia, a few days after arriving, she received mails with um, some screenshots with the applications. This is one of those screens. I practiced this uh, presentation before this event and I still cannot understand what this application was all about. She explained it to me. Uh, this application tries to give the user a possibility to see and read his or her favorite comics on the device. So she received a mail with the attachments, uh, with photos. Uh, Lucia, why don't you send me a nice picture or with a nice button to tap here in the beginning? Or please give me a background so it can be more attractive so that I can upload it to the store. And Lucia did whatever she could. She tried. First, she tried to understand what the application was all about. This was a little bit hard to understand. What are they asking me to do? How is this information structured? It was very hard. So Lucia tried her best to design a nice button, but it could hardly be attractive as they expected. Or in the case of these applications, Sebastian is here, right? Uh, this is an application uh, which is probably more intuitive. The user um, includes, uh, enters the number, flight number, and we get information about that flight. This is an application for travelers. I know which is my airport for departure, at what time I will arrive, how long it will take me to get there, what is the weather like, and so on. But even though this was more intuitive, there were certain things that made the application a little bit unclear. In the second screen where you see the departing, departure information, you're not clear about which is the airport you're leaving from or which is the destination. There are a few things on top of the screen where you see the bars. They are repeated uh, in the other screen. So the objective of that button is not clear. The user doesn't know what is expected of him. So this was more or less the flow that was being implemented. We were creating applications that stemmed from the idea of the developer or the idea of solving a problem with a given uh, application. Then the developer created it, developed the application, and then pass it on to the designer. You are in charge of the aesthetics. Make it attractive before we upload it. When we started working with Lucia, we had this idea. We thought of changing this. We wanted to organize this and make it uh, look neat. So in the end, the result could be the best for the user. 
So we did the following. As we had Lucia working with us, we said, why not work in a more integrated way as a team, uh, to team in the developer, the designer, and so on. We had to work together as a team from the early stages. And we thought about discussing the different aspects of the application with uh, an outsider, with someone who has other skills in relation to usability and user experience. So we changed it. And in fact, in the new process, we also started with an idea as a point of departure, an idea or a problem that needed a solution. So we decided to develop an application. As Fabian said, Fabian wanted to control his uh, soccer team in the league, so he had teams, uh, players, matches, times, schedules, and so we had to start by discussing the application, its main concepts, and then see how to go about it. So the, we also were wondering who's going to use this application, how will the person use it, where. Uh, if the application um, has to be accessed, or if the application has to provide certain information spontaneously, instantaneously, maybe when the person walks uh, the street, um, using the geolocation of the equipment, maybe the user wants information without having to navigate in it before finding it. Or maybe we're thinking about an application for someone who has time, who's at home, comfortably seated, uh, navigating his iPad, using the GenXs. The person has time to navigate the different options. That's a different story. So we tried to discuss um, all these possibilities, all these questions. We tried to answer all these questions to orient our job. With Lucia, we also did something else. Uh, we wanted an application that could run in all platforms, but we were not such a large team, so what we did was we looked into one platform and we said, we're going to do this application first, and then we will do iOS, and then we will do something else. The same um, in terms of the devices. If we wanted in the phone mode or the tablet mode, we had to focus first in one and then we created this application for a certain platform, for a certain device, and then we moved on. Another important thing we did in parallel and sometimes together was to do some research, to look into other applications, to download other applications, to go to the stores, to see what others were doing. For example, if we had an application regarding the weather, we went to the store, we downloaded applications relative to the store, to the weather, we tried to test them to see how other people somehow developed and structured the information and provided the user with certain formats, so as to obtain ideas, so as to transform them to benefit our own idea. And once we uh, went through this initial stage of discussion and definition of the main concepts, we moved into a second structure, uh, a second stage that was the structure. Yes, I will talk about structuring the application. By structuring the application, we mean uh, something that has nothing to do with typography or colors or aesthetics of the buttons or images. What it basically refers to is to uh, present like an outline of the different screens. We do this on paper. It's a more practical thing we have found because on paper we can modify things that we find in the different layouts and we jot down um, any ideas that come up. So when we start 
started structuring the application, we had a content. The content has to be organized in each of the screens that we will have later on. For example, the application for this meeting, which is already installed in your devices, I assume. This application, when we started working on it, we had a model and we said, what kind of information are we going to present in this application? We know we're going to have a program. We know that there will be speakers and rooms. These rooms will have special maps. Each speaker will have a bio. We will have to give information on hotels, restaurants, and so on. So how are we going to organize all this information to show it in a clear way to the user? So the program, for example, are we going to display it in a whole screen where the user will have to scroll up and down to find a conference? Or is this too cumbersome? Maybe we should separate that program uh, day by day and add a browser so that it is easier to locate a specific conference. How are we going to present all the conferences? With a title, with an icon relative to the room where it will take place? Where are we going to place the icon? On the left, on the right? Will we put the name of the speakers first? What menu are we going to use in this application? Uh, a tabs menu? or a table menu? What are we going to include in the menu? What information? What content? What are we going to show first? The program? The programs? The favorites? All of these things have to be dealt with as we structure the application. In this way, we will also define a navigation pattern. For example, I'm here in the program. So if I tap one of the conferences, what's going to happen? I will view the conference. If I tap the button of the room, then I'll go to a map to find the room. In that screen, I will also see which conferences will take play in that same room. If I tab one of the conferences, well, will this lead me? These uh, steps need to be defined as we structure and organize the content of each screen as we define the best navigation for the user. In this regard, let me tell you about our experience with Alejandro Rodolfo Robajo and Alejandra Cajiano. They are our team members at GenExus. Uh, when we tried to uh, explain the GenExus training application, this application was done for the GenExus community to get training through their own mobile devices. Our idea was there, so we worked on the idea. What is it that we want the application to provide? The application should have a main focus, the videos of the courses, the courses that the user can easily find so that they make their playlists, so that they have a browser to find them easily. And we said, let us determine which platforms uh, will use this first. Ale mentioned this. We said, mm, let us start by developing it for iPad, because the iPad provides better um, facilities uh, than the phones. So maybe the size of the iPad uh, can allow us to see a video more comfortably than in a telephone. So. We started defining the structure. We used a menu that was top format to have more space to put the video on an almost a whole screen. In addition, the video would have a title, a description, and a button to be shared, and a button to add to the playlist. And this is how we proceeded in defining each of the screens. So we defined that structure and we said, how will the users use this application? I am using this application, I'm watching video number one of the GenXus course, and what will I do to watch video two? Maybe I will have to tap on the course option, I will go to the course screen, I will choose the GenXus course, within the GenXus course I will select video two to go back to the main screen screen where the video will be played. So navigation was something like what you see on the screen.
At this stage, we realized what was going on. Even though the structure we had achieved was correct, adequate, the one we wanted to transmit the concept of the application so that the focus was on the videos and the users could find them easily, the navigation we had decided was becoming very complex for the user because he was watching a video and in order to watch a second video, he had to leave the main screen, go through two screens and come back to the main screen again. So at this point we said no, let us restructure our application so that navigation in the end is simpler. In this other way the users will not use it any longer, not only because it's complex, but they will be bored with this system. So we said, well, if we have iPad, let us use it in a split form. So the left side was for the menu options, and this allows the user to navigate on the right side. We have the video visible, and we added the related videos as slides at the bottom. In such a way that the user is watching video one of the GenXus course and he simply taps on the one at the bottom and the main screen shows the following video. If he looked for another course, he would go to course selection, do refresh, chose the course, and the main screen was refreshed with video number one and the related videos at the bottom. So we achieved something important. Our navigation became more intuitive and uh, user-friendly. The user was able then to watch videos and navigate the same screen. So why is it important to structure an application? Because it's useful to give us an overview of all the screens included, and this will allow us to locate uh, the elements. And in addition, we are able to navigate more intuitively and uh, more positively. So once we have the structure defined, we have to move into the visual aspect. The visual aspect uh, is what leads to the design. We start applying colors, typography, icons. And when we started designing the application, we found, we generally find two things. One is a setting where we have an identity associated to our application. For example, a customer that has a company or a product and says, I want to make an application for my product or my company. So they have a graphic uh, identity that has been defined already. And we need to reflect it in the application so that people who use the application realize that this application is related to a given product or company. And not only that, if I have Twitter application, if it's open in my iPhone and in my Android, I have to realize that it is the same application um, regardless of the features of each platform. And this is identity will have to be reflected in all the platforms where we develop the application. Another important uh, thing we may find is that, in fact, we do not have a graphic identity associated to the application. The only thing we have, for example, at the meeting application, we have a main concept, the concept of growing paths and the logo. So we knew that the growing pass concept was associated to all that has to do with the underground or subway. That is to say, moving on the aesthetics of a subway. So what can we take out of this uh, for inspiration? We look for images that relate to the concepts that we want to convey. For example, the lines of the metro with specific colors, how are they 
displayed, what typography they use, what are the predominant colors, what forms. All these things will be very useful when we de define the colors that are going to be used. And these colors need to be adequate for the application and for the idea we want to convey. In addition, it should also work well, because if the colors we choose are not contrasting, look at the example, you cannot read what's on the screen, it's too light. Um, and we need to choose a typography that is adequate and in a size that is adequate. Uh, if we have a long paragraph, we need to leave more space between the lines so that we can read easily. If we want to highlight a title, we must change the size of the heading and so on. In addition, we have to define the images that we're going to use. And the images we're going to use need to be prepared for the platform, for the devices we are working for. Because, for example, with um, the new Retina uh, devices of Apple, if we develop our application and our images are not ready for those devices that use a higher resolution than normal devices, our application will probably not look very nice in a Retina uh, device. So we have to get this ready so that the user can read it clearly. But in terms of the design of the application, it's always important to base yourselves on the official guides of each platform. They will tell us the sizes we need to use, how the icons need to be um, installed, what typography can be used, what menus are used. We at GenXus have in our wiki um, many documents about this. Maybe you find it useful, maybe your designers find it useful uh, to get information on these aspects. So once we have designed our application, the next step is to organize a manual of styles. This is a document where we put all the layouts that we will introduce in the application. In this guide, we will specify the colors used, the typography, the distances between elements. If we use images, we will have to send the images to the developer. If we use icons, we'll have to send them. So this guide and these icons and images will be sent to the developer for the developer to implement our design in his development. In general, my work uh, does not stop here. The GenXus team also, when we uh, forward all this to the um, developer, we validate uh, so that the design is implemented in the development. So now we come to the point where I open GeneXus and I implement the design that Lucia thought about in the application we already have. And we could have started with the prototyping to validate the structure somehow. Or, in some cases, we start with the development and design of application. I'm not going to talk about this. Fabian, um, after our presentation, will talk about this. He will explain in detail how, uh, starting with a design guide, they can move into GeneXus to implement it in the best way. <laughs> so, just to sum up, the process that we follow, the process we described, starts with an idea or solution to a problem, discussing the main concepts, uh, asking questions about who, how, where that application is going to be used. We define a structure uh, on the basis of that discussion of the idea to model the uh, application. Then we place our focus on the visual aesthetic aspect of the application and finally we create the application according to what we've been doing before. So, this is a process that uh, is giving uh, good results. This process 
is probably not the only one. There are many other ways in which you can create applications, but we found that this process um, has been able to um, make more intuitive, attractive, and functional applications, which in short is what the user wants, and the user is um, benefited by this. Thank you very much.